What is this? Looking at the suddenly changing space around them. The newly arrived members of the Eternal Clan became alert. Warrior Tina transformed into an energy spear and shield, ready for battle. God Madongshi, Gilgamesh, also assumed a fighting stance, his fists emitting golden light. It seems like an independent space. I have never seen this kind of technology before, and the Eternal Clan's database does not have any similar records. The Eternal Clan's black scientist, Fastos, took out a scanner but found nothing to scan. Because this is magic, you fool. Tony flew into the air, aiming his palm cannon at the Eternal Clan members below. Take them down, it was these humans who killed Ajax. With the support of their companions, Icarus, who had only thought of escaping earlier, now had the confidence to face them head on. He launched the first attack, his eyes once again emitting golden rays. But before the rays could fly far, they suddenly slowed down. That's right, they slowed down. Icarus's face showed a shocked expression. He found that his cosmic rays, after flying a few meters, became slower and almost stagnant. Buzz. Without Superman's originality, you still want to act like Superman. Chu Shu clenched his left fist. A blue light emitted from the gap between his fingers, the space gem. Using the power of the space gem, he infinitely extended the space and distance in front of Icarus. The final effect created was that Icarus's rays seemed to be stagnant. This thing is indeed quite interesting. Chu Shu finally understood why Thanos always wanted to collect the infinity stones, aside from the snapping of fingers. These infinite gems are quite entertaining. With a little development, one can completely perform various fancy operations. Unfortunately, for me, it's just for fun. After trying it out, Chu Shu put away the infinite gems and instantly disappeared from the spot. Where did he go? Although Icarus's abilities are very similar to Superman's. For example, he can fly, has great strength, his eyes emit light, he is fast, and his physical body is powerful. He is similar to Superman in every aspect, but, he doesn't have Superman's super reflexes. Ababababa. Behind you. The only person on the field who can keep up with Chu Shu's movements is that female speedster. Unfortunately, she is mute. Chu Shu instantly appears behind Icarus. In the mirrored space, he can finally let loose a bit. A punch. Icarus's figure turns into a shooting star, falling to the ground. Boom. The earth in the mirrored space trembles violently. Icarus pierces through the surface like a shooting star, diving into the rocky layers underground. Definitely, everything in the mirrored space seems to have shattered countless mirrors. The surging earth turns into countless fragments of glass. The reflected images on them. The intact view of the earth. Icarus. The other members of the Eternal Clan can't care about much else when they see this. They can only fight head-on with determination. The black scientist, Fastos, takes out a laser-firing war hammer and fires several shots at Chu Shu. Do you think you're Jesse? Note. Jesse is a reference to a character? Chu Shu is not polite at all. Dazzling purple light shines from his pupils as he turns around for a sweep. Buzz. The devastating annihilation beam narrowly pierces through the mirrored space, almost affecting the real world. Fortunately, Chu Shu consciously reduces the energy in time. But. Even weakened, the annihilation beam is still terrifying. Fastos puts layer after layer of energy shields on himself. Unfortunately, it's of no use. Buzz, the annihilation beam sweeps past. Fastos and his warhammer are evenly split into two. His body is split in half, falling in different directions. Fastos, seeing his teammate killed. Damn it, Gilgamesh roars angrily and leaps up. With his signature big slap, he intends to strike Chu Shu, but before the attack is ready. Boom. Chu Shu gives him a look. The annihilation beam sweeps across. Ah. Gilgamesh's right arm is severed at the shoulder. Blood splattered freely without cost. I'll find a way to control him. The spiritual manipulator, Druid, furrowed his brow. Invisible spiritual power spread towards Chu Shu's brain in the sky. But in the next second, the Druid's spiritual power seemed to collide with an immovable wall. The will of the sacred soul cannot be tainted. In an instant, a burst of light erupted from the spiritual plane, brighter than ten thousand suns. Others couldn't see this light, because it came from the spiritual plane. Ah! 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 But the druid screamed in agony, clutching his head. Blood oozed from his mouth, nose, eyes, and ears. Abba! Abba! The previously neutral Quicksilver couldn't stand by and watch as his comrades were injured one after another. 
he instantly transformed into a golden light and began running on the damaged ground of the mirror space. His speed was incredibly fast, it was difficult for everyone to see his movements clearly. Quicksilver, I wonder if that kid, Quicksilver, has awakened. This was Chu Xu's first time fighting against Quicksilver. As he spoke, with a thought, purple energy spread out, transforming into countless tentacles that covered the ground of the mirror space. Ah! The female Quicksilver, Makari, had only taken a few steps when suddenly tentacles appeared and entangled her ankles, causing her to lose her balance and be captured on the spot. Makari, seeing the female Quicksilver trapped, the one who could shoot energy balls from his fingertips, Sanjay, wanted to help. But before he could make a move, several large tentacles, like pythons, wrapped around his limbs. Chu Shu opened his fingers, and the tentacles simultaneously pulled outward. A tearing sound echoed, the scene was like tearing a rag. Sanjay didn't even have a chance to fight back and died on the spot, his body violently torn into pieces. Until this moment, the battle had only lasted for a moment. From the beginning until now, no more than three breaths had passed, and many members of the Eternal Clan were dead or injured. For non-human races, Chu Shu was always generous with his attacks. Not moving means using a move, and once you make a move, it's a deadly move, without any mercy. Boom. Just at this moment, Icarus, who was punched into the rock layer by Chu Shu, finally flew out. At this moment, this little Superman was covered in injuries, and his handsome uniform was also tattered. He looked extremely disheveled. I'm going to kill you. Ah. Icarus rushed out with anger, roaring, and then the next second. His voice abruptly stopped. What did you say? Chu Shu had already landed from the air, holding the last member of the Eternal Clan the female warrior Tina, with one hand. Like holding a chick, he held Tina's smooth neck while she was unconscious. Then he casually threw her aside. Icarus's voice abruptly stopped. The anger on his face instantly turned into fear. You just said you were going to kill me, right? Chu Shu didn't even look at Icarus, just waved his hand and cancelled the mirror space. With the eternal clan members who were dead and injured, they returned to the real world. Icarus opened his mouth. The last trace of anger disappeared when he saw the dismembered body of King and the split body of Faustus, as well as Gilgamesh's broken arm and Macaulay's broken ankle, and Tina covered in blood. Icarus's anger vanished. Only deep fear remained. Little Superman. Trembling. Don't be afraid, everyone has to experience death. Chu Shu comforted Icarus briefly, and deep purple light flashed in his pupils again. Icarus wanted to escape but found that he couldn't move. It was the space gem. The space around him was sealed off. Don't worry, under my attack, you still have hope of surviving. But this hope is very, 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 very slim. The purple light in Chu Shu's eyes grew stronger. Just as the annihilation ray was about to activate, a voice, a woman's voice, suddenly entered Chu Shu's ears. Please stop. However, buzz, the annihilation ray burst out. Chu Shu made a choice, sorry. The voice is unfamiliar, couldn't hear, ignored it. With the flash of the annihilation ray, the strongest warrior of the Eternal Clan, Icarus, also fell to the ground. A large hole was pierced through his forehead, penetrating from front to back. Tony stared blankly at this scene. From beginning to end, he didn't even have a chance to make a move, completely just a spectator, a pure freeloader. Now, he finally understood why Chu Shu had said before, unless the problem escalates to the level of Earth's destruction, don't come looking for him, otherwise your Avengers will probably be laid off on the spot. I finally understand how ordinary people feel when they look at me. Some people are truly beyond reach. Tony's face was filled with shock. In the eyes of ordinary people, he was an unreachable super genius. After all, the gap in intelligence cannot be changed by effort alone. But now, Chu Shu had become an unreachable existence in Tony's eyes as well. No matter how much he worked day and night, researching new armor and new technology, he still couldn't catch up to Chu Shu's footsteps. If you can't catch up, then just lick it, but Tony quickly accepted it. If you can make the big shots happy, they will let some benefits slip through their fingers, which would be enough for you to take off. Well done, brother. Tony approached with a swollen face and a smile that deserved a beating. Chu Shu ignored Tony. When he was about to kill Icarus just now, a voice suddenly appeared. It wasn't difficult to judge that the other party had contacted him through an ability similar to telepathy. Hey hey hey? Who was talking to me just now? Can you hear me? Hey hey hey? Chu Shu expanded his consciousness as much as possible. 
But the owner of that voice couldn't be found. However, there was an unexpected gain. Hum? I almost missed one. Chu Shu beckoned with his finger, and several giant tentacles flew quickly towards an empty space. The length of the tentacles seemed to be infinitely extendable. It seems quite Lovecraftian anyway. Ah. Accompanied by a scream. A tentacle seemed to wrap around an invisible humanoid creature. Like a python, it coiled around her legs, and then quickly pulled her back. In the process, the invisibility failed. The water spirit, like a child, revealed herself. As an illusion master of the eternal clan, the water spirit could create lifelike illusions and use them to become invisible. Let me go. Let me go. The water spirit was dragged by the tentacle, rubbing against the grass quickly. Soon, she was pulled in front of Chu Shu. Little friend, did you think that no one could find you when you were invisible? Chu Shu walked to the water spirit hanging upside down by the tentacle, opened his big mouth, revealing a mouthful of large white teeth. Combined with the sinister and full of evil tentacles of the K-series. The aura of a villain was overwhelming. I'm not a child. I'm already thousands of years old. The water spirit struggled frantically. But the tentacle immediately increased its strength, the terrifying force almost breaking her ankle. The pain made the water spirit's tears almost flow out. Oh, that's great. I was worried that I wouldn't pass the trial if I killed you just now. Hearing that the water spirit has lived for thousands of years, she is a standard legal lowly. Chu Shu immediately breathed a sigh of relief. The purple light of the annihilation ray lit up in his eyes again. Please stop. Don't kill anymore. Just as Chu Shu was about to take action. The voice of the woman from before appeared again, with a hint of urgency. Boom. I don't know if it's an illusion. Chu Shu felt a slight tremor beneath his feet. Who are you? He asked. Chu Shu furrowed his brow. Just as he was about to say, Who the hell are you? You say you won't kill, but then you kill anyway? The voice sounded again. I am called Tiamu. You may not have heard of my name, but I am the celestial being of this planet beneath your feet, the one in the earth. It was I who expressed my intentions to Ajak. I do not wish to be born, nor do I wish to destroy this planet. The woman's voice carried a hint of urgency. Afraid that speaking too slowly would result in the water spirit dying at the hands of this human. Damn it all. Why did this human act so quickly? Chu Shu listened to Tiamu's words, but only one thought popped into his mind. Do celestial beings have genders? Celestial beings do not have genders, but we can change our external appearance and voice according to our own will. This makes it easier to communicate with you humans. Tiamu's meaning was simple. Its consciousness was born on earth, so it adapted to the local customs. It chose a fixed gender and voice for itself. Oh. So you're genderless, Chu Shu's voice was filled with disappointment. He had hoped to become the fourth eastern legend, following Dong Yang, Shu Xian, and Ning Keqin. But now that plan was ruined. Well, Tiamu, I can spare the other members of the eternal clan, but this. Chu Shu paused, his gaze menacingly scanning the water spirit who appeared to be only around ten years old. That look seemed to say, just you wait, I'll come up with a reason to kill you. Ah. Sob. The water spirit finally cried. Although she had lived for thousands of years. Due to physical limitations, she never grew up. And her brain development was also unable to match that of an adult. So, in a sense, the water spirit was like a mischievous child who had lived for thousands of years. And it was well known that Chu Shu hated mischievous children the most. I can spare the others, but this mischievous child hit my good brother, Tony. To be honest, if it weren't for fear of provoking Tiamu to come out directly from the earth. Shu Shu couldn't even be bothered to find a reason. Isn't hitting a mischievous child just hitting? That's teaching and guiding. That's doing good deeds. After listening to Chu Shu's reasoning, Tiamu fell silent. How can you still have the audacity to say that you can spare the other members of the Eternal Clan? The problem is, you've already killed almost everyone. The remaining ones are either unconscious or have broken limbs. You are a disciple of the Ancient One, right? I will report this matter to the Ancient One and let her judge. Tiamu remained silent for a while and finally decided to file a small report. Fine. Let's both compromise. I won't kill this mischievous child. But there is one condition. You have to strip her of her eternal clan ability. I believe you can do it. Shu Shu definitely wasn't scared by Tiamu's report. He simply didn't want to trouble the bald one. And it was well known. Chu Shu respected the elderly and loved the young the most. How could he really argue with a mischievous child? Really? You want to strip me of my ability? 
Who would have expected the topic of stripping the ability of the Eternal Clan to come up? The Water Spirit was the first to agree, because she dreamed of getting rid of this body that never grew up. After all, as a girl, who would want to live for thousands of years and not be able to even fall in love? Chu Shu was a bit confused, but the words were already spoken. A gentleman's word is as weighty as a thousand pounds. He definitely wouldn't hold onto it and seek revenge on the water spirit in secret afterwards, no, he wouldn't. All right, you guys have survived, be grateful to the big shots behind you, Chu Shu clapped his hands. He said to the remaining members of the Eternal Clan. However, the female warrior, Tina, remained unconscious, and the spirit manipulator, Druid, seemed to have become an idiot. The only remaining conscious member of the Eternal Clan on the field was Gilgamesh, as well as the female speedster, Makari. One of them was mute, babbling for a long time, and Chu Shu couldn't understand what she was saying. You. Gilgamesh covered his right arm, which was broken at the shoulder, with a look of hatred in his eyes. Just as he was about to speak, a voice entered his ears. Gilgamesh's expression changed again and again. Yes. In the end, Gilgamesh reluctantly nodded. Then he looked at Chu Shu, hesitated for a long time, and said with grievance, I'm sorry, we were reckless. The apology had just been spoken. This 1.8 meter tall strong man was on the verge of tears with grievance. What kind of situation was this? If they couldn't win, that would be fine, but they even beat the wrong person. What's even more frustrating is that they were clearly the victims here, yet they still had to apologize to the person who beat them up. I really, oh my goodness, Gilgamesh looked very aggrieved. The female speedster, Makari, who was standing beside him, clearly received Tiamat's command. Abba 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 Abba. What about Kingo and Fastos? Are they just going to die meaninglessly like this? Makari anxiously gestured repeatedly. But after waiting for a long time, she didn't receive a response from Tiamat. You think it's possible that Tiamat is communicating with you through psychic powers? It can't see your gestures at all. Watching Makari anxiously gesturing like hand seals in Naruto. Shu Shu couldn't help but remind her, Abba? Makari's movements instantly froze. All right, the mastermind is already dead, crisis averted. Chu Shu didn't care what the Eternals members were thinking. If they didn't accept it, then just keep fighting. He turned around and walked to Tony's side, knocking on his iron shell. See, it's just a fight, right? Don't make it so complicated next time. Why bother forming the Illuminati? It's better to give up on that idea sooner. You have the time for this, you might as well help me develop a few more games. Oh, by the way, the Matrix game I mentioned last time, did you make it? Hurry up and make it, I'm waiting to play. Shu Shu said. Tony looked helpless, it's not a big deal for you. But for the Avengers, it's not a small matter. Just dealing with one Akaris, they probably have to call Thor for help. But Tony just silently complained in his heart. He wouldn't say it out loud. When Chu Shu heard him asking about the situation of the game company they talked about last time, a hint of embarrassment flashed across Tony's face. But it was just a fleeting moment, and it turned into confidence again. I'm working on it, don't worry, you'll definitely be able to play it. Game development progress 0%, Tony tapped on the reactor of the armor, ensuring its stability. That's good, I was worried you would just create a new folder to fool me. Don't worry. The folder hasn't been created yet. Just as Chu Shu and Tony thought everything was over. And they were about to leave, Cesaru, who had been squatting on the ground wiping away tears, looked up. In all honesty, Chu Shu had almost forgotten that there was also a member of the Eternal Clan on his side. Fortunately, they didn't notice her during the fight just now. King, Faustus. Cesaru knelt down on the ground, feeling sorrow for the deceased member of the Eternal Clan. Just as Makari had said, the culprit was Icarus, and King and Faustus. Their deaths were completely meaningless, although it was sad. Cesaru didn't forget that there was still unfinished business. Sorry, I want to say that even though Icarus is dead, the crisis is not over. Ajax wanted to join forces with you humans before he died, in order to stop a more terrifying existence. With tears in her eyes, Cesaru conveyed Tiamu's instructions. Even though Tiamu willingly stayed underground and didn't want to manifest as a god, but. The celestial being who implanted the embryos on earth, the one who sent us here. The judge, Arisam. He is the most ruthless among the celestial beings. Once earth is deemed worthless by him, no matter what efforts we make, he will immediately destroy earth and allow Tiamu to be born prematurely. Even Tiamu herself cannot change Arisam's decision. 
But Arisam is also the easiest celestial being to persuade, because he doesn't act based on personal emotions. As long as he deems Earth to be valuable, he will leave on his own. Sesaru revealed all the information she knew in one breath. The general idea is. Tiamu herself, no, the god herself cannot make the decision. The one who truly has the power is another celestial being, Artemis. The judge of the celestial group, this damn. Chu Shu listened to Siri's story with a displeased expression. After finally killing Icarus and getting involved with the celestial being Tiamu on Earth. You're telling me that I still have to consider the opinion of some damn judge? Damn it. After going through so much trouble, becoming a county governor, and still having to consider someone's opinion. Am I supposed to beg on my knees? What kind of damn celestial being is this? Are there no formidable people on Earth? Is this judge you're talking about powerful? Chu Shu's eyes were fierce. If I can't win in a one on one fight, I'll cheat. Even if the ancient one, the good king, is not as powerful as before. But with his combat experience, if a real fight were to break out, he would definitely be a formidable opponent. At worst, if I suffer a little loss, I can just call out for help from Lord Yueshong and bring over Li Ding. Besides, I've already slept with his daughter, so it's not too much of a loss. If things still don't work out, then I'll flip the table. I'll directly summon the fierce beast next door and we can all go down together. Give up on your idea, Chu Shu. The heavenly gods are unbeatable for us because they are all level single universe existences. Seeing a hint of fierceness in Chu Shu's eyes, Sei Shi immediately reminded him. But when Chu Shu heard the words, level single universe, he smiled. Rounding up. It's just a dimension, Mephista. Remember, there is nothing that cannot be defeated, my friend. Especially those who claim to be gods. Chu Shu, rarely seen, put away his nonchalant attitude. His gaze became extremely serious. What? You want to kill the celestial group? Why don't you go up to the heavens yourself? Inside the holy place in New York. Not long ago, Chu Shu, who was serious and said, the celestials are not invincible. Now he is being chased around by the ancient one, in a state of chaos. No, boss, listen to me, I have a plan. But this Artem is only at the level of a single universe, I think. Chu Shu walks around a glass display case, playing a game of Qin Wang circling the pillar with the ancient one. Just, only at the level of a single universe. I just don't understand. It's such a simple matter. It can be solved through negotiation. Why do you insist on fighting? The ancient one is about to be driven crazy. The judge Artem is just judging whether it is worth sacrificing the celestials to save the earth. You just need to prove that it is worth it, isn't that enough? Why take such a big risk? To provoke a fight with a single universe. I just don't like it. Chu Shu shrugged. I don't like you either. Stop right there. The ancient one clenched his teeth. He picked up a chicken feather duster from a nearby display case. Chu Shu's eyes widened. No, why would there be a chicken feather duster in the holy place? He paused for a second, then quickly realized. It must have been left there by Black Cat while cleaning, and she forgot to take it away. Felicia, you clean up labor tonight. You better worry about yourself first, inside the holy place. Chu Shu is being chased around by the ancient one. And Wanda, watching this heartwarming scene, has a smile on her face. Two super powerhouses who can make the earth tremble with a stomp of their feet. Now they are playing and chasing each other like children. They chased each other for a while. Finally, the ancient one couldn't keep up physically and was the first to retreat, cursing as he left the main hall of the holy place. I'm just talking, is it necessary to get so angry? Watching the ancient one's departing figure, Chu Shu shrugged and arrived at the heavenly body calendar. The reason why the venerable one is angry is because she feels that her power has declined and she can no longer help you like before. Wanda revealed the true reason for the ancient one's anger in one sentence. The ancient one is not afraid of the heavenly gods. She is afraid of the so-called level single universe. It's just that she can't stand in front of Chu Shu like she used to. Chu Shu listened silently for a while. Nonsense, I think this old lady is just going through menopause. Chu Shu finished speaking. He left the holy place in New York without looking back. Wanda shook her head from behind, you guys are just being stubborn. Chu Shu, who left the holy place in New York, walked alone on the bustling street. Chu Shu actually understands the ancient one's concerns. After all, he is not a reckless warrior. He knows very well the risks of confronting a level single universe heavenly god. You should know that the heavenly god Arisam is not Quagus. He has not been sealed. 
his level single universe power is absolutely solid. Moreover, among the members of the Heavenly God group, Arisem's strength is still at the top. He is definitely a top-tier powerhouse. Chu Shu just doesn't want to see others' expressions. To be precise, Chu Shu is unwilling to entrust life and fate to others. If the content of the negotiation is whether sacrificing a heavenly god is worth preserving the earth, then it is actually entrusting life and death to a so-called heavenly god. Purely based on the other party's mood, in fact, if this matter can really be resolved through rhetoric, Chu Shu would not object, but the problem is. What if the negotiation fails? What if the final judgment of this judgment heavenly god is that the earth is not worth sacrificing a heavenly god? Should they just obediently accept death without resistance? You guys can negotiate. I'm just preparing for a fight. Shu Shu shook his head slightly, he would rather be fully prepared than rely on others' moods. Just like how he always outshines his enemies in every battle. Prepare for the worst. Carrying a nuclear bomb to challenge someone is Chu Shu's style. Mutual destruction is always an option for Chu Shu. What a coward. Just do it. If worse comes to worst, summon a bunch of evil gods and destroy this universe, then move to another parallel universe. Anyway, Marvel doesn't lack parallel universes. Far in the depths of the universe, the celestial god Arithim, billions of light years away from Earth, could never have imagined. Just now, because of a human's thought on Earth, the fate of this universe now hangs in the balance of Arithim's decision. If Arithim knew all of this, he would probably be a bit overwhelmed. Bro, it's not that serious, really. I don't know if Earth is worth sacrificing a celestial god, but it's definitely worth it for you. Meanwhile, Chu Shu was walking on the street, contemplating whether to recruit Odin and deal with the celestial group together. In Mephistas, no, it should be Chu Shu's blazing hell. Hela was commanding a large army, slaughtering the remnants of Mephistas subordinates, and the blazing hell was filled with bloodshed. However, in the midst of the purge, boom! The sky, burning with flames, suddenly resounded with a loud noise. Hum! Hela seemed to sense something, she looked up suddenly. Her sharp gaze locked onto a flash in the sky. There was something there, falling rapidly, soon enough. That thing landed. Boom, in the blazing hell, it was as if an earthquake had occurred. That small thing actually created a huge crater by smashing into it. Mjolnir? Hela hurriedly made her way to the meteor crater. Then, from a distance, she could clearly see the object in the deep pit. That's right, it was Thor's weapon, Mjolnir. Definitely, in the earlier millennia, this was the weapon Hela used when fighting alongside Odin. How could Mjolnir, my foolish brother? Hela approached Mjolnir, about to bend down and pick it up. But she noticed something on the handle of Mjolnir. It was covered in dried god's blood, and there was a bloody handprint. In some universe, in the distant future, Asgard was in ruins. Everywhere, there was dried god's blood and a putrid, foul black substance. Inside the once glorious Asgard, no living deity could be seen anymore. Only countless black monsters surging like a tide. And their target was the one-eyed deity sitting on the throne, old and frail, with a broken arm replaced by the arm of the destroyer, and a blind left eye covered by a black eye patch. At the feet of the old one-eyed deity lay a heavily scratched Mjolnir and Odin's sword. As the monsters surged forward, the last deity in Asgard stood up. With his left hand holding Mjolnir, and his stone hand pulling out the sword of the casket. Come, hound of evil, old Thor shouted, in Asgard, there is still one deity alive. And he will guarantee it to you. Now is the end of all this, with blood and thunder, with war hammer and blade. In the name of the last deity guarding the heavenly realm, old Thor leapt into the midst of the densely packed black monsters. Odin's sword is drawn. The end of all things is near. This is the end of the god slaughterer and its black berserker. This is the end of Asgard's enemies inside the queen's room in the queen's district. A Mjolnir stained with dried divine blood is placed on the coffee table. Hela's face darkened as she reported what had just happened in hell. After listening, Chu Shu reached out and grabbed the handle of Mjolnir. With a gentle lift, effortlessly, he picked it up. And this also meant, Odin's spell had also failed. Do you think Thor is dead? Chu Shu looked at Hela and handed Mjolnir over. Hela silently took it and shook her head, I don't know. But one thing I can be sure of, Odin is gone. I can't sense his presence anymore, and the seal he set up in Helheim has also failed. There was no trace of joy on Hela's face, she hated Odin to the core. 
she wanted nothing more than to kill the old man herself, but at this moment. After learning that Odin had disappeared, and possibly died, Hela couldn't feel happy. I think something attacked them. Hela tightened her grip on Mjolnir, a hint of ferocity flashing in her eyes. Even if Odin died, he must and can only die by her hands. No one else should even think about it. The Ancient One, who came from the holy place in New York, had been silently listening on the side. Her eyebrows furrowed, seemingly thinking about something. Boss, do you know what's going on? Chu Shu asked. Just a few minutes ago, he was still thinking about asking Odin for help in dealing with the God Squad. But in the blink of an eye, it was Odin who encountered trouble first. I'm not sure either. For the first time, the Ancient One showed a puzzled expression. She had seen the script of the future over and over again through the eye of Agamotto. But because of Chu Shu's arrival, the development of many things had deviated from the predetermined trajectory. However, despite this, the Ancient One said, I'm not sure, instead of, I don't know. Clearly, she had some guesses. Never mind, let's go and see for ourselves. Seeing that even the Ancient One couldn't provide an answer, Chu Shu didn't waste any words and decided that no matter what the matter was, he would go to Asgard to find out. Boss? Chu Shu just spoke up. The Ancient One immediately understood what he meant. You go, leave Earth to me. If Erisham comes, I will notify you immediately. Hee <laughs> hee, you still understand me. Chu Shu grinned. Immediately, he brought Hela outside. Taking out the divine artifact, Gram, the tip of the sword pointed straight at the sky. Boom. The colorful pillar of Bifrost immediately descended. A strong smell of blood. It seems like the situation is not good. Setting foot on Asgard's land once again, Chu Shu immediately smelled a strong, almost pungent, smell of blood. Inside Bifrost. That man who looked like a sculpture. Asgard's Asgardian, Heimdall, was missing. Inside the magnificent Bifrost structure, there were only two corpses. It's Fandral and Hogan, two of Asgard's three warriors. They were also good friends of my foolish brother. Although Hela had been sealed for a thousand years and had never set foot in Asgard. But she had paid some attention to some of the famous rising stars in the realm of gods. The three warriors of Asgard were among them. They struggled before they died, they died in battle. Shu Shu squatted down and examined them. Fandral and Hogan's bodies were covered in various forms of injuries. There were claw marks like those of a beast, as well as cutting wounds from blades, and penetrating wounds from spears and other sharp weapons. And this meant, the enemy was either numerous in number, or, they carried a treasure trove of weapons with them. Let's go, let's go somewhere else and take a look. Chu Shu got up and flew away from Bifrost, as soon as he came out. The scene outside was even more shocking. The whole Asgard seemed to have experienced a great war. The magnificent buildings of the past were damaged to varying degrees, covered with traces of battle. Blood was everywhere. The bodies of the deceased Asgardians filled the square. Their deaths were varied, with grimaces and expressions of pain, as if they had seen something terrible. This is a massacre. They didn't even have time to sound the alarm. Hela flew to another square. Surrounding her were countless fallen elite Asgardian soldiers. The standard Asgardian armor seemed to have failed to withstand the enemy's attacks, with holes all over it. Based on the surroundings, it was not difficult to determine that these warriors had experienced a great battle before their deaths. But there were no enemy bodies on the square. Not a single one. Asgard has become a realm of death, there is not a single living person here. Hela's face darkened, and no matter who caused all this, she would make them pay. Perhaps there is still one. Chu Shu expanded his consciousness and searched for a while then suddenly looked in a direction and said. The two arrived at Asgard's prison, inside the prison. Bodies were also scattered everywhere. The invaders seemed to not care about the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They, or it, not only slaughtered the prison guards, but also the prisoners held inside. Shu Shu and Hila walked into the prison, stepping over the bodies. They soon arrived in front of a special cell. Loki's cell. Inside, it was also a mess. Chairs were shattered, and even Loki himself was disemboweled, a gruesome sight. All right, stop pretending, your sister is here. Shu Shu knocked on the wall. Soon, a green light flashed. The fake Loki, whose body was opened up and torn apart, slowly disappeared from the ground. In its place, in the corner of the prison cell, was the real Loki, with disheveled hair and a terrified expression. You can never imagine what kind of scene it was. The Asgardians, the Warner Gods, the Elves of Alfheim. Everyone is dead. 
Loki, with disheveled hair, trembled as he spoke. This once invincible and arrogant god of deceit, who invaded New York, now resembled a humiliated woman, filled with fear. Freya. Is also dead. A tear slowly fell from Loki's eyes. Chu Shu didn't expect the situation to be this serious. Even Freya had died. Loki. I'm asking you, where are Thor and Odin? Where did they go? As the king of Asgard, and the heir to the throne. Is this how you and they protect Asgard? Hela grabbed Loki from the ground. She lifted Loki up like a little chicken, she loudly questioned him. I don't know. Loki was a bit confused by the question. No, who are you, sister? Asgard is destroyed, why aren't you angrier than me? Odin has been missing for a long time, as for Thor. All I know is that he fought with the invaders and then disappeared. Perhaps the blow this time was too severe, and Loki, the god of trickery, surprisingly told the truth. He revealed all the information he knew. Who was the invader? Chu Shu asked. He calls himself Jell, the godslayer. Jell. To Shen J. Gare. I know it. In the holy place of New York, the Ancient One listened to the account of Chu Shu and his group upon their return. Her eyebrows furrowed involuntarily. Now we have a problem, said the Ancient One. Why? Chu Shu knew that the trouble the Ancient One referred to was definitely not as simple as a gare. As expected, the Ancient One continued. What she said next shocked everyone present except for Chu Shu. Because the gare in our world is still on its own planet, suffering from drought. At this time, it is far from growing into the future to Shen Zhe, Gare. It is just an ordinary life form on an ordinary alien planet. As soon as the Ancient One finished speaking, everyone, including Hila, was bewildered. What does this mean? The Gare in our world is not the Tishen Zhe. Then who is the Tishen Zhe Gare who is slaughtering the gods now? Do you mean that there are other Gares from other worlds who have come to our world? Wanda was the first to react. No, said the Ancient One. It's Gares from other universes. Wanda was shocked. Her worldview was once again expanded. It seemed that ever since she followed Chu Shu, there had been one mind boggling revelation after another. Gares from parallel universes? Chu Shu could accept that. After all, as a time traveler, he was mentally prepared for the many parallel universes in Marvel. He just didn't expect the existence of parallel universes to come so soon. Chu Shu. Do you remember when I told you before that the dimensional barrier in our world has become fragile? Now it seems that the impact has already begun. The Ancient One's face was solemn. Our immediate priority now is to figure out which universe this girl comes from. Because there are some very dangerous ones among the countless parallel universes. Chu Shu understood clearly that the Ancient One's warning was not groundless. The universe they were in was either the movie universe or the expanded universe of the movie. But that didn't matter. What really mattered was which universe this Godslayer girl came from. Chu Shu was afraid that this guy came from a comic book world. Because of well known reasons, the characters in Marvel movies have been greatly weakened, and their combat power is completely incomparable to that in the comics. If it really is from the comics, then it will be a downgrade. Chu Shu frowned, but he wasn't panicked. After all, Girl was an invader from another universe, and according to the system's judgment, definitely a demon. As long as he found it, a demon expelling card would solve the problem. But the others present didn't have demon expelling cards. When they heard that Godslayer Girl was an invader from another parallel universe, everyone showed a worried expression. On one hand, they were worried about how powerful Godslayer Girl might be. On the other hand, it was also the most important aspect. After dealing with Godslayer Girl, would there be even more powerful invaders to come? Obviously. The Ancient One saw everyone's concerns and spoke up. You don't need to worry too much about the invasion of parallel universes. After this matter is over, I will personally go to the depths of the universe and have a chat with Atlas. Who is Atlas? Chu Shu was a little confused for the first time. He really didn't recognize this name, and more importantly, it wasn't mentioned in the movie either. Seeing Chu Shu's confusion, the Ancient One smiled. Hee <laughs> hee, how long have you just stepped into the divine level? The water in this universe is deep, my young friend, something you can't grasp. The Ancient One revealed a profound and inscrutable smile, as if she had become the Venerable One again. But in the end, she explained Chu Shu's doubts. Atris is the physical embodiment of the anchor of the universe. She maintains the stability of the universe and prevents it from entering ultimate destruction. Definitely, each parallel universe has its own anchor of the universe. 
and the anchor of the universe in our world, is a very lovely girl. After the ancient one finished speaking, she held back a mischievous smile and deliberately observed Chu Shu's expression. When she saw Chu Shu's eyes light up, she immediately added. In a sense, Atris is also the guardian of the dimensional barrier. If she finds out who broke the dimensional barrier, guess what she would do? Sure enough, upon hearing these words, Chu Shu immediately abandoned the idea of following the ancient one to see the world, and the cute girl. What the hell is this anchor of the universe? It's definitely not as cute as my Wanda, right? As soon as Chu Shu finished speaking, he immediately regretted it. Sure enough. Da, Ling, am I not cute? Hela's face darkened, her eyes flickering with a fierce light. Then Black Cat, Sky, and Gwen also stood on Hela's side one after another. Chu Shu looked at each face and suddenly froze. Huh? Gwen, what are you doing here? Did I wake you up? Oh, right, I didn't. Gwen also realized it. Her face instantly turned red to the roots of her ears. Originally thought I joined a superhuman team, but ended up joining a jerk. Cough cough. The most important thing is, being with my sisters every day, Gwen almost got herself involved too. Fortunately, we weren't targeted by bad people. Gwen patted her chest and quickly hid behind everyone, desperately trying to lower her presence. Shu Shu felt a bit embarrassed being stared at by pairs of eyes. Damn it. Mouth faster than brain. How could I praise someone in front of a group of people? That's a big taboo. Well, the important thing is the task at hand. Our immediate priority is to find the Slayer of Gods, Gel, and prevent more deities from being killed. Rebuilding the glory of the Northern Gods is our duty. Shu Shu looked serious. He felt for the first time that Gel's invasion was so reasonable and appropriate. The Northern Gods? You reminded me. Hila suddenly thought of something and quickly said. If Gel's goal is to slaughter all deities, then its target is definitely not just the Asgardian and Warner deities. Gods like the Olympians, Egyptian deities, and even the great Luo Tien could be its next targets. Hela's words also reminded Chu Shu, as is well known. Marvel is a worldview of mythological mix. It not only includes Norse mythology, but also Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, and Eastern mythology. It's just that compared to the previous ones, the great Luo Tien, Eastern Heavenly Court, is more mysterious and has fewer appearances. These are mythological systems already confirmed in the movie universe. From Thor 4, Moon Knight, and other works, it seems. We are going to encounter many legends next. Shu Shu was slightly excited. Although the Eastern gods in the Marvel Universe are slightly different from the immortals in Chu Shu's memory. But at least. The names are the same, and there is a little sense of familiarity, right? Let's go. I can't wait to have a fight with the Monkey King. Marvel 616 Universe thousands of years ago. On an unnamed planet, Gel was born, and since he could remember, the sky had never rained. The earth cracked and vegetation withered. Gel's tribe fell into a long lasting famine. During his childhood, Gel witnessed his mother fighting two beasts over a few wild fruits and getting seriously injured. Before dying, his mother held Gel's hand and prayed to an unfamiliar name. That was the first time Gel learned about the existence of gods. They created everything, they are benevolent. They pity the world and its people, they bring eternal peace to their believers. They take devout believers to a worry free paradise. Then, his mother died, and her body was hung on a tree according to customs, eaten clean by scavenging birds. Jell grew up. The second deceased loved one was his wife. While pregnant with Jell's third child, she fell off a cliff due to prolonged hunger. As she fell, she cried out, Please, gods, forgive us. But Jell didn't hear any response from the gods. He ran down the cliff and only saw his wife's torn apart body. Several months later, Jell carried his last child, Agar, walking in the desert. His previous child, the firstborn of his wife, had died twelve sunsets ago. Daddy, I'm hungry. Mommy said the gods will hear our prayers, is it true? Now, Jell's last child was curled up in his arms, weakly speaking. He was skin and bones from hunger, but he was still praying to the gods. It's true. Jell replied. Soon, his last child also died in his arms. This time, Jell didn't follow the tribe's customs, he didn't hang Agar on a tree. Instead, he buried him in the ground. This is taboo. You're harming that child. You should hang him on a tree so the gods can see him, take him to heaven. The tribal elders loudly criticized Jell's actions. But what came in response was Jell's trembling finger, filled with anger. 
Where is God? I'm asking you, where is God? Jell pointed to the sky, tears in his eyes. Where was he when my mother was bitten by the beast in front of the divine totem? Where was he when my wife fell off the cliff? Where was he when my child starved to death? I'll tell you, the divine doesn't exist at all. Mortal, gods are created. Jell cried out in anguish, but all he received from his tribal brethren were angry stones thrown at him. Blasphemer, stone him, don't let the gods hear his lies. That's right, my disabled left leg was healed by the divine, this is proof. He is impure now, the tribal elders finally made a decision. They exiled Jell, throwing him into the desert, battered and bruised, to fend for himself. Until everyone had left. Jell struggled to stand up, his eyes blinded by blood, unable to see clearly. He stumbled aimlessly, not knowing how long he walked. Until Jell's consciousness was almost consumed by emptiness. Two shooting stars, falling towards Jell's direction. Boom. The earth shattering sound woke Jell from his hazy state. He wiped away the dried blood and strained to see the scene in the deep pit ahead. It was two divine beings, two warring divine beings. One black, one golden. The two deities pierced each other's bodies with their blades, perishing together. Jell crawled into the pit with great difficulty. When he approached the golden deity among them, a weak voice suddenly reached Jell's ears Save me. What? Jell was startled. Then, an unnamed anger surged from the depths of his heart. Save you? Jell looked at the golden armored deity, his gaze gradually turning fierce. Why didn't you save my mother when she died? Why didn't you save my wife when she died? Jell struggled to pick up a stone and slowly walked towards the golden armored deity. When my son died, why didn't you save him? Jell roared in anger. He heavily smashed the stone on the head of the golden armored deity. The stone shattered into pieces, but the golden armored deity showed no reaction. Mortal. How dare you kill a god? Just as Jell was at a loss for what to do. The weapon in the hand of the deceased black armored deity suddenly turned into black liquid and spread towards him. Go away. Go away. At first, Jell resisted in fear. It wasn't until his fingers touched the black liquid that he calmed down. He originally thought it was a curse, but now it seemed more like a promise. A promise to kill all the deities in the universe. The black liquid turned into a pitch black blade in Jell's hand. It easily pierced through the brain of the golden armored deity. Thus, Jell completed his first deity kill. But it would never be the last. In the universe where Chu Shu was located. Now, on the same nameless planet, Jell carried his daughter and walked laboriously in a desert. They had already finished their last bit of food, but there was no hope in sight. Daddy, I'm hungry. Jell's daughter weakly spoke in his arms. I know, my child, I know. Jell gently put her down. Then he knelt on the ground and took out the deity totem hanging around his neck. Oh great deity, lap, we beg you for water and food. Jell prostrated himself on the ground with utmost piety. After a long time, he slowly stood up, but behind him, his daughter had already lost her breath completely. No. No. Jell despairingly held his daughter, lying on the ground, curled up in the desert. Hunger slowly consumed his consciousness, and in a daze, he seemed to see a forest of green shade. There, the fruits were abundant, blooming with fresh flowers. Exhausting his last bit of strength, Gare crawled towards the forest he saw in a daze. It wasn't until his palm grasped the damp grass. That Gare confirmed this wasn't a mirage in the desert. The forest was real. The flowers and fruits covering the ground were also real. Haha, a wild dog has intruded, devouring my fruits greedily. Just as Gare, due to hunger, picked up the fruits on the ground and crazily devoured them. Lofty voices mocked as they appeared, Gare lifted his head. His shocked pupils quickly contracted. Great Lapu, the messenger of light, I am Gare, your final protege. Gare immediately put down the fruits and knelt on the ground. Haha, still my follower. That lofty voice still brimmed with mockery. Echoing laughter came from the surrounding forest. Great Lord, we have lost everything and have been living in great hardship. The river has dried up, and living beings are suffering, but we have never wavered in our faith in you. Only to wait for your eternal grace, Gare wanted to express his piety. But in return, he received even more ruthless and mocking ridicule. Ha ha ha, this wild dog actually thinks there is eternal grace, ha ha ha. The laughter from above abruptly stopped. Gare still knelt on the ground devoutly, not daring to lift his head. 
until a golden liquid slowly flowed to Gara's fingertips, did he raise his head in confusion. Only to see the great deity Lapu lying on the ground. His head severed and discarded like trash. Golden divine blood flowed all over the ground. And standing beside Lapu's corpse was a tall and cold figure. Gare was stunned. He felt that this figure was both very familiar and very unfamiliar. Who are you? Gare trembled as he asked. The figure remained silent, slowly taking off the hood that transformed its body, revealing its true face. I am you. Gare answered, Mount Olympus. Similar to Asgard and the Spirit Prison. In the Marvel Universe, Mount Olympus is also located in a pocket dimension. They are connected to the main world, but they are far apart. Only through special means, or knowing the exact coordinates, can one go there. Fortunately, the big shots are in contact with each other. With the coordinates provided by the Ancient One, Chu Shu directly took the Bifrost to the City of Omniscience. It is claimed to be the gathering place of the strongest gods in the universe. But actually, Actually, Zeus gathered a group of little brothers and set up a makeshift team. The so-called, strongest gods in the universe. Most of them are unknown minor characters from other planets. Like the god of stones, Naniric, the god of carpentry, the god of dreams, and so on. Even, there is also a god of steamed buns. Yes, the steamed bun you eat for breakfast. Definitely, occasionally some big shots come here. Gods from different systems, like Egyptian gods, Mayan gods, occasionally come to attend meetings. I don't know if I can see familiar gods on this trip. Accompanied by Chu Shu's teasing voice, boom, the colorful pillar of the Bifrost directly landed in the city of Omniscience, on an empty grassland. Leaving a complex pattern of burn marks on the grassland. Darren, I think you might be disappointed. The gods of the Great Luo Heaven are very mysterious, and they generally do not interact with gods from other systems. Hila answered Chu Shu's question while walking out of the Bifrost pillar. As the only survivor discovered by Asgard, Loki naturally was brought along. Along the way, this guy was full of questions. So, you really are my sister? Then, the heir to the throne of Asgard, isn't it? Loki felt more and more absurd as he spoke, using a bunch of conspiracies and tricks to compete with Thor for the inheritance. But now, a long princess of Asgard suddenly appeared. Her position is higher than both himself and Thor. Even more outrageous is, Half of Asgard's territory was conquered by this princess herself. So why bother fighting for it? Save it, little brother. I have no interest in that old man's throne. Hela is, after all, the ruler of Hell in Niflheim. Even if Hell is unified in the future, she will still be Chu Shu's top general. Stop talking, something seems off. Chu Shu walked out of the Bifrost beam. Immediately sensing that something was not right. Too quiet. The location where they were teleported was a garden-like area within the city of all-knowing. Colorful flowers bloomed all around. And looking around, one could see that the so-called city of all-knowing was actually a floating complex of buildings. Everywhere were luxurious buildings, resplendent and magnificent. But the only problem was, too quiet, you're right, blink. The Bifrost made such a commotion, yet not a single deity came to investigate. Perhaps we have arrived too late, Hela's expression turned serious. She took out the Night Sky Sword with her left hand and Mjolnir with her right. Preparing for battle at any moment, follow me. If there's anywhere we can find these arrogant deities, it must be the Golden Hall. Loki seemed to be familiar with this place and took the lead. You've been here before? Chu Shu casually asked. Definitely. I and Thor have caused quite a bit of trouble in this place, but that was all foolish behavior from our youth. Loki lied without batting an eye, as the Norse god of mischief. It hadn't been long since his last mischief in the city of all-knowing. That time, Loki teamed up with the Greek god of mischief, Hermes, to steal Apollo's cattle. This greatly angered Apollo, the god of light and art. In the end, when Apollo came looking for them, Loki blamed it all on Thor. Causing Apollo and an unsuspecting Thor to fight. Hee <laughs> hee. Thinking about the things he had done before, Loki couldn't help but smirk. A mischievous look. Smack. Who would have thought that right after he finished laughing? Loki received a slap on the back of his head. Who allowed you to laugh? Chu Shu glared at Loki fiercely. The situation in the city of omniscience is currently unknown. An enemy could appear in the next second. The atmosphere is tense, and you suddenly laugh for no reason. Damn it! Isn't it scary? Loki was about to speak. Smack! Another slap landed on the back of his head. This time it was from Hela. 
And this slap was even heavier than Chu Shu's, almost giving Loki a concussion. If I tell you to shut up, you shut up. If you don't listen, do you want to die? Hela shook Mjolnir and the Night Sky Sword. Loki was scared and immediately shut his mouth. He dared not say another word and obediently led the way. Being well behaved. JPG soon, everyone arrived at the center of the city of omniscience. Their worries were indeed true. From a distance, they could see two dead giant deities. Oh my god, the heavenly god group? Chu Shu widened his eyes. Because those two dead giant deities were dressed exactly like the members of the heavenly god group. They were wearing the same heavenly god armor, holding huge amounts of scepters. Compared to Artemis and the other members of the heavenly god group, they were either identical or at least very similar. Damn it! Zeus really has some face, huh? A heavenly father. Letting two level single universe beings guard the gate for him? Darling, laugh if you want to. Those two should be titans of the gigantification clan. It seems Zeus has tailored a set of divine armor for them. It's just a piece of armor that looks like divine armor. Hela's mouth curled up. She had only heard before that Zeus, the Greek god king, was very narcissistic. But she didn't expect. This guy could be so narcissistic as to create two, divine team, to show off. Although it's just a piece of armor, but it's not easy to easily slaughter two titans of the gigantification clan. Hela said, putting away her smile. The three continued to walk towards the golden hall. Stepping over the corpses of the divine team, the three finally arrived at the golden hall. As soon as they entered, the three saw a shocking scene. The magnificent hall was in ruins, with the towering columns collapsing one by one. The divine seats surrounding them had become the funeral platform for the gods. Corpses were scattered all over. These low-level gods from different planets were slaughtered like pigs, dogs, cows, and sheep. Almost defenseless, they were slaughtered one after another. Golden divine blood. Flowing down from the seams of the divine seats. From top to bottom, it formed a golden lake. The golden hall. It lives up to its reputation. Chu Shu stepped on this golden lake, his face slightly solemn. The worry happened. This gel. Most likely, it's gel from the comic world. Otherwise, it wouldn't have such terrifying combat power. Although these killed gods were generally not strong, Chu Shu could have killed them all as well. But. Killing is one thing. Massacre is another. Ah. 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 Just as Chu Shu was observing the situation in the Golden Hall. A loud shout suddenly came from outside the hall. Then, a burly figure crashed through the wall and rushed in. Godslayer. Come and die. Kill. Ah. A muscular man, standing at over two meters tall. Holding two giant hammers, roaring, charging towards Chu Shu and the others with overwhelming force. Who are these two idiots? Just as this thought flashed through Chu Shu's mind. The strong man had already rushed in front of him. With hundreds of tons of terrifying power in his hammers. He swung them down towards Chu Shu's head, Hercules. No. Loki, who had been, silenced, all along. Finally broke free from the seal and tried to stop it. But it was too late. Boom. Only a deafening sound that pierced the heavens and the earth could be heard. The mighty god Hercules flew upwards like a bullet leaving the barrel. With a loud crash, he broke through the roof of the Golden Hall and continued to fly higher. But Chu Shu didn't give him a chance to continue ascending. A teleportation, he appeared above Hercules in advance. And kicked him down again. Boom! Hercules descended at an even faster speed. Transforming into a black shadow, he crashed down in the center of the Golden Hall. Smashing the lake formed by the gathering of divine blood into nothingness. Golden blood scattered like flowers from the heavens splattering all over the ground. Darling, can you please pay a little attention next time? You almost covered me in blood. Hela was lucky to react quickly. She pulled Loki in front of her in time, blocking the splattering divine blood. Boom. Chu Shu landed on the ground. All right, I'll pay attention next time. Chu Shu walked in the direction of Hela after saying a few words. Hela casually threw Loki to the side and followed. The throne Loki rolled on the ground twice. At this moment, he was covered in the foul-smelling blood of gods, with a blank expression on his face. Just like when he invaded New York and was beaten up by Hulk. What did I do to deserve this? Hey, wake up, big dummy. Chu Shu walked to Hela's side and kicked him. Ah. Hela suddenly woke up. Letting out a roar. Scaring Chu Shu back a step. What are you shouting about? Just because you have a loud voice? Godslayer. Are you challenging me, Loki? 
Just as they were about to fight again, Hila saw Loki not far away. The tall and foolish guy suddenly calmed down. Sorry, it seems I misunderstood. You are not the Godslayers. Hela's sudden change caught Shu Shu off guard. He thought this guy was like Thor, with a lump of muscles on his neck. But now it seems that only Thor is the foolish one. Haha, ha, surprising, right? Hela is not as foolish as Thor. There's a saying on Earth, appearances can be deceiving. Loki wiped the blood off his face and walked over. With a smirk on his face, as if saying, see, this is all because of me, if it weren't for me, you would have to fight again. Shut up. Okay. Loki immediately stopped smiling. Being obedient. JPG, may I ask who you two are? Hela looked at this scene in astonishment. He and Thor and Loki were all part of the same new generation. So I don't know Hela, let alone Chushu on Earth. Hela, the goddess of death from Helheim, former ruler of Hel. Hela's self introduction does not include her identity in Asgard. This made Loki take a closer look at her. Loki is not stupid, he realizes that Hela harbors resentment. Ah. Uh. Chu Shu originally wanted to boast about things like the Devil of Hell, the Nightmare of Dimension Mephista, the newly ascended Heavenly Father on Earth, the number one rebel against the Ancient One, and the assistance in defeating Dormammu, and so on. But in the end, Chu Shu decided to use the thing he was most proud of. As his personal introduction, Chu Shu, the number one Batman in the American server, the strongest king of glory with 1200 points. Hagrid couldn't understand a word. But seeing Chu Shu's serious expression, he suddenly felt impressed. Respected king, please forgive my previous rudeness. Hagrid said seriously. Hela suppressed her laughter. It's okay. So, big idiot, no, Hagrid, what exactly happened here? Chu Shu gladly accepted the title of Your Majesty and asked. Your Majesty, as you can see, there has been a massacre here, a massacre targeting the gods. I arrived one step too late. The killer has already left leaving only a few evil dogs, dark berserkers. Hagrid said, lifting the lower part of his armor to reveal several long claw marks on his abdomen. I defeated those monsters and saved a few gods who were few in number. Just as I was about to evacuate them, I heard your commotion. I thought the killer had returned, so, Hagrid was somewhat embarrassed. But more than that, he felt self-blame and anger. He always believed that if he had come earlier, he could have saved more gods. You said you defeated a few monsters, where are the bodies? Hela looked around, there were only the bodies of the gods, not a single monster in sight. They disappeared, after I defeated them. These black dogs turned into liquid and disappeared. Hagrid answered in a deep voice, Black Death Sword. Chu Shu had read the comic and knew what Gare's weapon was. The Black Death Sword? Hela had obviously heard of it too. But the version she knew was the Gare's weapon in this universe, the Black Death Sword, not the Gare's weapon from the parallel universe invasion. It's the full Black Death Sword. Don't forget, the Gare we're looking for is not the Gare from our world. Shu Shu corrected Hela's mistake. In the comic, the full Black Death Sword was forged by the symbiotic god, Nal, as a sword to kill gods. Shortly after its creation, Nal used it to kill a member of the Heavenly God group. Then, using the blood of the deceased god, Nal continued to forge and strengthen the sword, making it even more terrifying. As a result, the full Black Death Sword had a characteristic, the more gods it killed, the more powerful it became. In simple terms, this is a sword that can stack layers of kills, no, kills gods. By the way, what about Zeus? He shouldn't be so easily killed, right? Chu Shu suddenly remembered an important question. After all, he was a level god father the Greek god King Zeus, and he shouldn't be so easily defeated, right? But this question was coincidental, as Heracles happened to be Zeus' son. This guy was on the same level as Thor in Marvel. Both were sons of god kings, don't you know? Unexpectedly, when Chu Shu said this, Heracles was the first to show a puzzled expression. Earlier, when Thor came to seek help, my father agreed. And then he took my brothers Ares and Apollo and left Olympus with Thor. But, they obviously couldn't eliminate the Godslayer. Otherwise, the tragedy in the city of omniscience wouldn't have happened. After Heracles finished speaking, a worried expression appeared on his face. If even the king of God Zeus couldn't eliminate the Godslayer, then who else could? If you have anything else you want to know, please follow me. Heracles took a deep breath and buried his worries in his heart. He picked up the two dropped hammers, and led the way ahead. 
Quickly under the guidance of Hagrid, Chu Shu and the others met several surviving gods. For now, let's call them gods, a giant stone man adorned with countless scissors. Yes, it's the same stone man, Korg, from Thor 3 and 4, his fellow god is named Meek. Meek. The scissors on my body are all spoils of war, because rocks beat scissors. Meek noticed Chu Shu and the others and was very interested in the scissors decorations on its body, so it explained. But obviously, no one present could understand what it was saying. The other one is the god of hair. This guy only has one head, with two feet directly connected below the neck, no body or hands. The only distinctive feature is that his hair and beard are very thick. His ability is to cure baldness. Phil Coulson should burn more incense for this guy. The thought popped into Chu Shu's mind. The last surviving god is a chubby white middle-aged man with two bunches of grapes on his head. But the man was obviously frightened, crouching on the ground trembling. Dionysus, the god of wine on Mount Olympus. Hagrid, helpless, had to help with the introduction. Just when Chu Shu thought that these were the only three gods who had survived by chance. Suddenly, something soft and squishy touched his foot. He looked down. It turned out to be a bouncing cartoon style bun. When Chu Shu noticed it observing itself, the cartoon style bun blinked its big eyes and looked up at Chu Shu. Why is your art style different from ours? Bun. The god of dough suddenly conjured a small dough hand. Then it conjured a steaming bun and struggled to hand it up, passing it to Chu Shu. Um. Are you sure? Chu Shu hesitated and cautiously took a small bite of the bun. And then, in an instant, his eyes widened. This taste. Incredible. Chu Shu had never eaten such delicious dough food in his entire life. Amidst the surprise, Chu Shu quickly observed the crowd. After confirming that everyone's attention was not on this side, he decisively opened a miniature portal, lightly kicked, and sent the god of buns inside. Hum. Where is the god of dough? Soon, Hagrid noticed the absence of a deity and became very puzzled. I, I don't know, Chu Shu said with his mouth full of the buns given by the god of dough. He shook his head vaguely. For the god of dough, who had no combat power and relied solely on cuteness, Staying in the holy place of New York with the Ancient One was undoubtedly a safer choice than staying in the city of all knowing. Hagrid obviously thought so too. Wait. You mean, there were two godslayers attacking you at that time? The surviving god of wine, god of fur, and the stone god who could only say, Ninnik, described the scene of the attack. The general idea was, they were holding a banquet as usual, and then two godslayers stormed in. One of them was even more powerful, with a casual swing of his sword, killing the two, heavenly god group, members guarding outside the door. This godslayer killed all the powerful deities at the banquet. He also summoned a large number of dark monsters, blocking the escape route for the gods. He killed the powerful deities, and left the weak non-combat deities like the god of dough and the god of wine to the other godslayer. And then he left. How did you survive then? Chu Shu asked. Ninnik, I didn't ask you. The stone god responded enthusiastically. But Chu Shu was helpless, as he truly couldn't understand what the stone god was saying. The remaining godslayer doesn't seem to have a strong killing intent. He just kept asking us if there was a way to bring someone back to life. We definitely can't do it, so we told him to go find the Eternal, and then he left. The wine god explained intermittently while hiccuping. These western gods are really unreliable, aren't they? At times like this, Chu Shu really missed the great Luo Golden Immortals in his memory. When Chu Shu asked if Hades had any news about Eastern gods, Hades shook his head. The great Luo heaven closed its entrance completely several hundred years ago. Even Kunlun has closed its mountain gate. Forget about the godslayer, even we can't find the entrance. I haven't seen them in a long time. Hades then told a story from his youth, about how he met Neza, the mischievous god from the east. That's right, in the Marvel world, Neza is the god of mischief. Well, it seems I won't have a chance to compete with the great sage sun. Upon hearing the news of the great Luo Heaven's closure, Chu Shu felt somewhat disappointed. But everything has its pros and cons. If Chu Shu can't see the Eastern Immortals, then the Godslayer Jir will also not be able to see them. The tragedy of Asgard and the City of All Knowing will not be staged in the great Luo Heaven. It seems we have to deal with two Godslayers, Darren. After listening to the Wine God's story, Hela came to a conclusion. Chu Shu was also curious. What does this invading godslayer, Jir, want to do? Could it be that he came all the way here just to help himself become a godslayer ahead of time? Wait. 
It shouldn't be like the Conqueror Kong, leading a group of its own variants, causing a hunting god movement in the multi-universe? Never mind, no matter what kind of idea you have, unfortunately you've encountered me. Chu Shu shook his head slightly. Actually, he didn't dislike Jell. Although Jell's role was that of a villain, Chu Shu still agreed with some of its views. For example, mortals are not created by gods. Chu Shu quite agreed with this man can conquer the heavens attitude. If possible, Chu Shu would actually prefer to use a banishing card to send Jell back home. Who let it wander around with the all black necrosword? As a famous divine artifact in the Marvel Universe. The divine killing attribute of the all black necrosword perfectly restrained gods like Ares. And Chu Shu just happened to need such a divine killing artifact. What a coincidence. A friend comes from afar, and though far away, they must be killed. Chu Shu took out the eye of Agamotto, started monitoring. I wonder where Jell is hiding. Through the time gem, Chu Shu could only see a dark, colorless space, unable to see anything clearly. That place seemed like some kind of alternate dimensional space. And, why do I feel so familiar? Chu Shu put away the eye of Agamotto. That dark space gave him a very familiar feeling. There's a situation. Just as Chu Shu was pondering what that dark space was, Hela's bracer suddenly flickered twice. I've received a distress signal from Ares. He's with Thor. They're under attack by the god Butcher.